Hello, listeners. Welcome to Marie Lives the Whore. This is episode 22 of the series of True Paranormal Ghost Stories. In tonight's episode, we dive into a tale of unexplainable dark phenomena in a new home. We journey into a deep, out-of-body experience with malevolent intent. And we hear of a unique haunting in a fire station. These stories are presented in collaboration with Dr. Gangster's Horror Stories. Be sure to check out the collab video I did with him, as well as check out his other horror stories on his channel. Link will be in the description. So without further ado, step Step into into my my horror horror chamber chamber. as As we we live live the horror horror together. together. Evil Presence in our home. I thought I would share my true story about the unseen living soul that was living in our home. One day when I was a child, me and my parents were looking for a home to settle in that was closer to my school I used to go to. My parents asked a few agencies around the area and one of the agents showed us a home that was reasonable to what we were looking for, cheap and not far from my school. My parents decided to rent it as we were in urgent need to move due to the end of school term, and we started school in a week. Mom saw the house. She liked it, but there was a strange feeling she had about the house she wasn't yet aware of. We slowly moved into our new home until at least settling in. Our first night was fine, just a bit cold, as it wasn't fully furnished yet, but there was one room at the far end of the house that always felt so hot every time we opened the door. It also had a rotten, smoky smell to it, but we didn't really pay attention to the idea much. We just always sprayed it and cleaned it to get rid of the smell, but yet, it just keeps coming back. One night while we were sleeping, I heard a cat meowing under my window, crying for help. I got up to see, but then, There was nothing to be seen. I thought I had a dream and I woke up to it. The following night, the same thing happened around 12 a.m. A crying cat calling for help along with the fireplace tray being dragged in the lounge. I was freaking out and wished that it was all a dream while the cat kept meowing louder and louder. I went to go see the cat, and this time, I saw a black cat under my window crying. It was the same room that always was so hot, suddenly opened. I got up, ran to my mom and dad's room, told them I couldn't sleep, and what happened. They told me they had woken up to their blanket getting pulled from on top of them. My mom went to the kitchen to grab me a glass of water. She found the fireplace tray flipped on the floor with ash everywhere. Mom had also baked some sweet potatoes and she left them on the kitchen bench. There were some that were missing and a couple on the floor. It was a shocking moment for everyone that we couldn't really believe what was happening. Mom ran to us in the room explaining, and she said that she no longer wanted to stay in this house. Dad said, let's just calm down and see what we can do in the morning. The next morning, Mom said she would contact the agent who rented the house to us 
to find out exactly what happened in this house. So mom and dad spoke to the lady and invited her over for tea. Dad asked her to explain why the house was so cheap and what happened in the house. Mom explained what we were experiencing lately. She then told us that many others like the home but experience the same problem and that the original owner of the house came, wo came home one night from work. After a long day, he was cooking himself some dinner while suddenly he caught himself on fire. While he screamed, running to his room to fetch his phone to call someone for help, but he had failed to and passed away inside the house. After the lady had left, leaving us with the option then to leave, mom said that we should start packing and leave. At least we could go get a hotel for now until we find something else. That night we left to stay at a hotel. While we took our bags and on our way leaving, I found the same black cat that was meowing under my window. I found him dead. And I knew it wasn't all a dream after all. I knew that all I saw and heard made sense after hearing the agent lady say her part to the story to finish it all off. And knowing that there is another side to life that we cannot see but to know that there is another living being out there, other than humans. I hope you guys liked my story. I would love to hear yours too. Did I imagine it? I'm not sure if this is the correct place to post. I worked on hospice wards as a CNA. We definitely see things, especially on night shift. One incident that was specifically creepy to me, and people think I'm absolutely insane when I talk about it. We had a patient who was diagnosed with dissociative identity, think like split, and she had 23 separate personalities and some of them were seriously violent and scary when they showed themselves. The aide that worked her section on the night she passed away started acting crazy a few days after that. Out of the blue, she'd make hurtful comments and she started getting mean with the residents and staff, usually a very sweet woman. I mentioned something to her husband about it, and he stated that she was acting aggressively at home too. He had to send their kids somewhere safe because she almost killed their dog on top of other things he refused to mention. They were afraid. Several shifts I had to work with her were extremely uncomfortable for many reasons, but the creepiest part was that I was having a conversation with her on the walkie radio, only to find out she was on lunch and didn't have a radio with her during the time we'd been talking. Witnesses attest to that. Several shifts I- eh, shit. She has a very distinctive voice, so I know for a fact it was her. I had the heebie-jeebies so freaking bad. I avoided having to work with her like the plague. She had this dead look in her eye and I just couldn't. I felt terror just being close to her. We used to be best friends and I'd spent a lot of time together, so I was accustomed to how she normally acted and this was not her. There were two other things that I don't even know if I should mention because it's what makes people think I'm making it up. But I have a recording of the exorcism rite set to music on my playlist. I listened to music quietly with earbuds on at work, but there were three separate occasions where that song played on my phone while I was on the same area as her. No possible way that she could hear what it was because of the headphones, and she would freak out like she was in excruciating pain. After a while, I put two and two together and would start that recording out of her earshot several times just to see what would happen, and it was always the same. The second thing is that I wear a silver triquita ring on my left hand. I brushed up against her with that hand once and noticed that she flinched in pain. Later I accidentally on purpose grabbed her arm with that hand and it legit left a huge well like she was burned. On my way home from work that night, I smelled sulfur in my car and got seriously paranoid about it so I played the exorcism recording and guess fucking what? The smell dissipated instantly. I saw her at work the next day and she mentioned waiting for me after work last night but couldn't find me and I was really confused because she and her husband left before I got out, and she waved as she walked by me, and I remembered the smell and made the connection. Throughout that day, 
She was trying to invite me to her house after work. I played it off like I had plans because to be honest, I was feeling very uncomfortable and still didn't know if I was having an active imagination or if I was really face to face with something evil. To be honest, I did have plans. I was my boyfriend's ride home from work that night. When I told her I'd at least have to get him home or if I could bring him, she got insistent that she needed me there right away. I told her I'll try to make it and it seemed to appease her. The next day, she was very obviously agitated that I didn't come over. I swear I was hearing her whisper threats under her breath and was I was praying under mine. I asked why it was so important I come over since I've been busy, but maybe there will be time this following weekend. She said, I just want to get you alone and smiled at me with cold, dead eyes. From then on, I constantly had an uneasy feeling that I was being watched. I dreaded going to work because my skin would crawl the moment I entered the building, whether she was there or not. The smell of decay and sulfur was overwhelming to me. I'm not religious at all, but I was praying to every god or a deity in existence for protection or a sign that I was going crazy anything. I put on my grandmother's cross pendant, thinking to myself, anything helps. I kid you not, the next time we were alone together, she looked me in the eye and said, that won't help you, you have no idea what you're dealing with. If it didn't, then why haven't you found a way in yet? Her only response was, I will break you one way or another. The second my shift was over, I called in that I quit. While I was getting ready for bed that night, I just remember waking up on the bathroom floor with gashes in my arms. I called my mom, hysterical, saying I was coming home right now. It was 3 a.m. and I was four hours away in another city. I drove all the way home that morning and didn't even grab my shoes or anything. I'll disclose that I was five months pregnant when all of this happened and it's highly possible that I simply experienced stress-induced psychosis. That doesn't explain the things her husband was texting me after I confronted him about her behavior, including a video of her growling and acting all tweaked out while he read verses from the Bible and pictures of the bruises she had on her body in the shape of reverse handprints. I'm still terrified to this day to go back to that town or anywhere near her. Now I have a hard time working night shifts and being around schizophrenic patients. And that's the story of how being a fan of Supernatural saved my life from demonic possessions. Out-of-body experience. I created a throwaway account just to post this. I really just want to share this one. To start this story, I actually have to give some background first. I'm a younger guy from a family where black magic is common. I'm talking aunt playing with a Ouija board and seances and all that stuff. Me and my mom never went black magic. My mother was abused by her mother, my grandmother, and therefore their relationship isn't the best. Ever since my mom and gra grandmother lost contact with each other, my mom gets haunted by my grandmother when she has an out-of-body experience. She appears as a black, evil entity in my mom's bedroom and torments her at night. This went on for a couple of years. My grandmother actually told my mom that she saw a black entity in our house and that she better watch out for it. She also said that when she dies, my mom will know what my granny really is, which is freaky. My mom has always known that my grandmother was the entity for reasons I'd rather not talk about. After five years, my mom and grandmother got back in touch again and the black entity disappeared. I had never seen the black entity, but I always believed in my mom and know that she would never lie about this. Flash forward to this year, my mom and grandmother had struggles again and my mom told her that she didn't want to see her for a while. Keep in mind that my grandmother knows where my mom's bedroom is. So a few weeks after the incident leading up to their time out, my mom is brushing her teeth and she sees a black entity going in her bedroom, just like years ago. 
This happens several times. Now my mom starts sleeping on the couch, and for a while, she is feeling safe. But she keeps seeing the dark entity going into her bedroom. My bedroom has never been haunted and was always a peaceful place. Then I get a present from my mom. It's a vintage, big black and white framed photo of the lovely Marilyn Monroe. I'm very happy with it and hang it in my room, opposite to my bed. That night, my mom wakes me up. Apparently, the light that is the closest to the Marilyn photograph had been turned on by itself, and my mom was convinced I was awake. I wasn't. I was asleep and under the covers, so I wasn't sleepwalking either. I always make a mess when I sleepwalk. I was spooked, but I went to sleep and didn't think much of it. My room felt lighter and more peaceful than usual after that night. I didn't think much of it until a week later. I meditate late daily to reduce stress and clear my mind. I think this makes me more connected to the spirit world. After closing my eyes, I saw myself leaving my body, and my body was still in the bed. I decided to walk outside since I realized that this was an out-of-body experience. I walked across the street and saw people going about their morning routine until I see a blonde lady in the far distance. I walk closer and realize it's Marilyn Monroe. She smiles at me and is walking her dog. I come closer to her and we stare at each other and nod. I pet her sweet little dog and look up at her, still not believing that this is Marilyn. After that, I walk through the park and come across a pub. A friendly man dressed in a smoking with curly hair waves at me and invites me inside. I enter the bar and walk into a 1950s pub complete with jazz music and smoking people dressed in 1950s outfits. I talk to some of them. I've never seen any of those people before. But for some reason, I felt at home. I walk around and see some of the people. They all smoke, drink, and some of them wear fedoras. I see Marilyn standing in the corner with a cigarette. She smiles at me once more and I smile back. As I walk away, a black entity starts to appear. I freak out and decide to get out of there. I run back home in panic, and I enter my living room and see my mom sleeping on the couch, and the black entity is floating above her. At this point, I am horrified. This was the black entity my mom was talking about for years, and now I'm face to face with it. I run to my bedroom to enter my body. But as I get closer to my body, the black entity grabs me and pulls me away from my body. I get up and try to get back, but as soon as I enter my body, the black entity grabs me and throws me on the floor again. After a few struggling attempts, I manage to get myself back into my body and I wake up. As soon as I wake up, I feel like I've been in a coma. And for the rest of that day, I feel like I haven't slept at all. I tell my mom and she believes me, but is also scared of this black entity. And she knows for sure that entity is with her at night. A week later, I Google Marilyn Monroe dog. And I kid you not, there is a picture of her with the exact dog I saw her with during my out-of-body experience. 
I had never seen the picture before, yet here it is. After a little research, it turns out Marilyn was a dog person and had many dogs and pets in her life, including the one I had seen. I don't care if anyone believes me. I know what I saw and this experience was life changing for me. And that's what I wanted to share. Bless you all and stay safe. Fire station hauntings. I know a few firefighters and each one I know have, all have experience or I've heard their colleagues talking about how one of their stations is haunted. The station in question is located in Scotland. I won't say where as it's still a functioning station and to this day the haunting is still active. My fiance's dad worked there at some point and told me one of the nights he woke up in sleeping quarters in the freezing cold, even though it was summer. He said he could sense there was a presence in the room with him. He shrugged it off and went back to sleep. Another experience he told me was as he was leaving the station at the end of his shift, his relief had turned up. They stood in the car park chatting for a few minutes and then both departed. He jumped in his car and looked in the rearview mirror and was shocked to see a figure in white follow his mate into the station. Another firefighter I know told me this experience. He was sent out with a colleague to visit the station one day. As they arrived, they found that the engine and crew had been turned out on a job and the station locked up. They made their way to the back and up to the canteen. As they approached, they could hear someone in the kitchen, sounds like plates moving and the chinking of a teaspoon in a cup. They shouted, thinking it was the cook, no answer, but still the noise of a teaspoon. They phoned a colleague to ask if the person inside could let them in. They were told abruptly that no one was in the building at the time. The same friend told me another story he was told from an officer. The officer was sleeping one night in the quarters when he woke up to the noise of someone thumping on the floor outside his room. It was as if someone with heavy boots running from one end to the other. He woke up furious that his younger colleagues were playing a prank on him and dashed to the door trying to catch the running prankster. As he opened the door, stood right in front of him was a fire extinguisher. It was revolving on its axis, just spinning on the ground. It never fell over, it just kept spinning and kept going on the same momentum for several minutes. It only stopped when he kicked it over. My fiancé's cousin, who was also a firefighter, worked there on relief, and when returning from a job, the crew found a fire extinguisher in the middle of the bay where the engine is parked. No one else was in the building when they left. Several have said they have seen him. Usually they see him standing over them when they wake from sleep. He's been described as a monk and has the nickname Mr. Boots. A few years ago, they called in a paranormal investigation team, and a medium there said that Mr. Boots was a monk sentenced to death for crimes against children. He was burnt alive. That's no surprise that he is a monk and there is an abbey nearby. My mom was saved by a spirit. This is a story my mom told me before she passed. She swore it was the truth and told me every detail about it. The story pans over four days or so. She had already previously felt weird things in the house, but it never manifested itself the way it did on this week. One night, my mom went to bed and put her electric blanket like she did every night. It was the 70s and was very common at this time. During the night, she woke up and felt something next to her on the bed. She focused her eyes, and she saw there was a shadow next to her. But when she stretched her hand out and patted the bed, nothing was there. She shrugged it off and fell back to sleep. The next night, same routine with the electric blanket. She was woken up again by the feeling of something pushing into the palm of her hand. It felt like a finger jabbing it, slowly adding more pressure until she shrieked and turned the light on. Nothing was there. She eventually fell back to sleep. The next night or so, she fell asleep again. During the night, she was woken up, but she felt very groggy. 
She opened her eyes and at the bottom of the bed, there was a woman sitting. She couldn't make out who. She initially thought it was her mother. She was holding the plug adapter and shaking it vigorously, repeatedly saying, this is dangerous. This is dangerous. My mom was half asleep, thinking it was her mom, and said something like, Mom, go to bed, it's the middle of the night. And she fell asleep again. The next morning, my mom remembered the encounter vividly, so naturally asked her mother if it was her at the bottom of her bed. Her mom, confused, said, no, it wasn't her. My mom told her what the woman said, so they went back to her bedroom. Her chest of drawers was slightly moved out of place, so as her mother went to move it back, she noticed that the socket which the electric blanket was plugged into was completely black. After an electrician came to check it out, he said that if it was left any longer, it could have started an electrical fire. Later when my mom and her mom were talking, they concluded that it was probably my mom's grandmother trying to look out for them. It's such a crazy story, makes my eyes water whenever I tell it to someone. The shivers I get are real. Anyways, hope you enjoy. I was always aware about the ghosts here in our house, but I want to tell you guys about a specific ghost that has been following me. A little background on me, I am now 26 years old, bisexual, and a working individual. I live with my parents in a one-floor townhouse. I do not have any siblings. I am a closeted bisexual, so my parents don't know about me being gay, so I would usually introduce my ex-girlfriends as best friends. The first girl I brought home was my college classmate. My parents grew fond of her, so she would be in my house frequently, overnights and all. At first everything was fine, then one day we video chatted through Skype with her little brother. I used my computer in our living room, so you can see the whole living room through my camera. We were joking with each other, then she said, where is your mom going? I was confused, so I asked, what are you talking about? She said, well, she just went out the door behind you. I laughed and said, what are you talking about? I am the only one here inside the house. I thought she was messing with me as she was aware about the ghosts in our house. Her face turned pale and she looked at her little brother. She asked her little brother if he saw a woman behind me. He said yes, and she kept telling me she was serious and I shouldn't be messing with her. I told her that there is no one else in my house because they went to their church gathering. She said it looked like my mom. She swears she was not lying as her little brother saw her too. We ended the call shortly after because she was freaked out. I wasn't though because ever since I was a kid they have been making me feel their presence. I shrugged it off thinking it must be another doppelganger. Next few weeks I think we had our physics class on the fourth floor. It was our last class of the day and it was around 6.30pm roughly so it was dark outside. It was a lab with a huge glass wall overseeing the middle of our school campus. It reflects a little when you look at the glass since it was dark outside and we had lights inside the room. It's hard to explain. Anyway, she was toying with my hair while waiting for our professor to get back from getting the lab materials for her lesson. Then she stopped. I asked why. She said she saw a woman right behind me when she looked at our reflection in the glass. It was a split second though, so we didn't think much of it. Months passed and we broke up eventually. When I was finally working, I met another woman and we got together. I would bring her to my house too, but not that frequent as she lives quite far from my house. On one occasion wherein she stayed in my house, she was silent when we were eating. I asked her if something was wrong, but she said she will just tell me once we were back in my bedroom. When we finished eating, we went back to my room and I asked her again. She told me that there was a woman peeking at us while we were eating. She was standing maybe two meters away from the dining table near the stove. She saw her for a few seconds, but long enough to describe her to me. She said it was a woman dressed in white and has wavy hair. Her description fits the woman who has been haunting my dreams when I was a kid. The next encounter was when I took a bath. Right before I went to take a bath, she was begging me to hurry up, so I said it wouldn't take long. 
I took a bath as fast as I can so she won't worry. She told me that the hanging lock on my bedroom door swung so hard even though there was no fan or wind blowing. It was so hard that it wasn't usual. She said it stopped when I came back from the shower. There was also one encounter when we were in the office. She was a trainer so she was having a meeting with her co-trainer in one of the rooms. When they were talking they were facing the opposite side of the room. The door opened so they looked towards the door and they saw a woman leaving the room. Which makes no sense because they were the only ones inside the room and the sliding door was so heavy they would have heard if someone went in. It was the same woman, white clothes, wavy hair. I only saw that woman inside my dreams. She was always mad at me. I had inception dreams. Sort of a dream within a dream. She would hold my arm so hard and pull me towards I don't know where, but it would always resist inside my dream. I don't know who she is and she has been bothering whoever my partner is. Not only inside my house, but in my previous school and in my office. I just wanted to share this to you guys. I am no longer afraid of her, but I am deeply bothered. Hello, listeners. Thank you for watching tonight's episode of True Paranormal Ghost Stories as you live the horror with me. If you have a story that you would like to be featured in a future episode, check the description down below and send them over to my email. Do not forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to keep up with future episodes. Thanks for listening. I am your host, Marie Lives the Horror.